President Trump's group have propelled lawful activity against the degenerate Hillary Clinton crusade, contending that at any rate $84 million of degenerate giver cash was channeled through a system of uncivilized intermediary associations so as to swell the Clinton coffers by a huge number of filthy dollars previously the 2016 race. The Committee to Defend the President, a political activity board of trustees, has documented its objection with the FEC, asserting that the Clinton crusade worked outside battle-back law, boldly laundering cash from Democratic Cuber givers. For Viewpoint, moderate producer Dinesh D'Souza was arraigned and sentenced in 2012 for giving a modest bunch of partners cash they at that point added to a competitor of his inclination, at the end of the day, straw man commitments. He was condemned to eight months in a group repression focus and five years of probation. What amount of cash was included? Just $20,000. Hillary Victory Fund, HVF, tips the scales at $84 million, more than 4,000 times bigger. Dan Backer, from the Committee to Defend the President, clarifies the case that could convey equity to the degenerate Clinton crusade and power Hillary Clinton to surrender the unlawful millions. In 2014, the Supreme Court decided for my customer, Alabama Bill Sean McCutcheon, in his test to the Federal Election Commission's FEC, obsolete total cut-off points, which viably restricted what number of applicants any one giver could bolster. Hostile to discourse liberals railed against McCutcheon's win, contending it would make supersized joint fundraising committees JFCs. In court, they asserted these JFCs would enable a solitary giver to cut a multi-million dollar check, and the JFC would then course finances through many taking an interest state parties, who might then pipe it back to the last beneficiary. Vote-based system 21 President Fred Wertheimer guaranteed the Supreme Court's McCutcheon v. Feck decision would prompt the arrangement of authorized payoff reproduced that existed preceding Watergate. The Supreme Court in decision for us, Strait expressed such a plan would even now be illicit. The Democrats' reaction? Hold my brew. The Committee to Defend the President has documented a fact grumbling against Hillary Clinton's battle, Democratic National Committee, DNC, Democratic State Parties and Democratic Super Benefactors. As Fox News detailed, we recorded the Democratic Foundation a sing state sections as straw men to go around battle gift limits and laundering the cash back to her crusade. The 101-page grumbling concentrated on the Hillary Victory Fund, HVF, the $500 million joint raising money council between the Clinton crusade, DNC, and many state parties, which did precisely that the Supreme Court pronounced would even now be illicit. HVF requested six-figure gifts from real givers including Calvin Klein and Family Guy maker Seth MacFarlane, and directed them through state parties on the way to the Clinton crusade. Generally $84 million may have been washed in what may be the single biggest crusade fund embarrassment in U.S. history. This is what we know. Crusade back law is unbelievably intricate and notorious for its absence of lucidity. As I've clarified some time recently, its unpredictability is a component, not a bug. Major political players with the assets to procure the not very many lawyers who hone crusade fund law advantage from the unpredictability that keeps others out. Maybe HVF's modelers thought so as well, and accepted that if nobody comprehends what's occurring, nobody would gripe. This is what you can do, legitimately. Per decision, an individual benefactor can contribute $2,700 to any applicant. $10,000 to any state party board of trustees, and, amid the 2016 cycle, $33,400 to a national gathering's primary record. These gatherings would all be able to get together and take a solitary check from a giver for the total of those commitment limits, it's lawful in light of the fact that the contributor can't surpass as far as possible for any one beneficiary. What's more, State gatherings can make boundless exchanges to their national gathering. This is what you can't do, which the Clinton machine seemed to do in any case. As the Supreme Court clarified in McCutcheon v. Feg, the JFC may not request or acknowledge commitments to bypass base cut-off points, through reserves and straw men that are at last over the top, there are five separate preclusions here. 
over that, six-figure gifts either never really went through state party accounts or were never in reality under state party control, which includes false fake revealing by HVF, state parties, and the DNC to the clothing list. At long last, as Donna Brazile and others conceded, the DNC put the assets under the Clinton battle's immediate control, a monstrous rupture of crusade fund law that ties the intrigue together. Equitable givers, knowing the assets would wind up with Clinton's battle, composed six-figure checks to impact the decision, 100 times bigger than permitted. HVF packaged these mega gifts and, on a solitary day, announced exchange in cash to all taking an interest state parties, some of which would then appear on fake reports documented by the DNC as exchanging precisely the same sum on precisely the same to the DNC. However not all the state parties announced either getting or exchanging those aggregates. Did any of these exchanges really happen? Or on the other hand would they say they were simply paper passages to cover guide exchanges to the DNC? For viewpoint. Moderate producer Dinesh D'Souza was indicted and sentenced in 2012 for giving a modest bunch of partners cash they at that point added to an applicant of his inclination, at the end of the day, straw man commitments. He was condemned to eight months in a group constrainment focus and five years of probation. What amount of cash was included? Just $20,000. HVF tips the scales at $84 million, more than 4,000 times bigger. So who ought to be concerned? Everybody included, from the benefactors themselves to Democratic pledge drives to party authorities who documented false reports and, at last, to Clinton battle and HVF authorities taking a gander at noteworthy lawful peril. Try not to trust me. Our objection is fabricated altogether on the fake reports documented by Democrats, updates wrote by Clinton crusade supervisor Robbie Mook and open articulations from Donna Brazile and others. The main inquiry that issues, was the law broken? On the off chance that the appropriate response is yes, at that point the degenerate Clinton machine ought to be considered responsible. Dan Backer is a veteran crusade direct, having served more than 100 applicants, PACs, and political associations, including the Committee to Defend the President. He is establishing lawyer of political.law. A crusade.